Hello and welcome to your breakthrough hour. What a joy to meet you today in this moment. I believe this is the moment for a breakthrough in your life. And for those of you watching for the first time, just want to welcome you with all my heart. I'm Pastor Paul Moses and uh, you have not landed into this broadcast by accident. It is by God's plan and purpose. I know God will meet you today at the point of your need. Whatever you're facing, God will speak to you a word which will change the course of your destiny and you will receive something good from God. And for those of you who are watching us regularly, a big warm welcome. I know God will also bless you and you'll receive something special today. And we're going to get into the word of God right away. And this is going to be something special. Shall we go? Today we're going to see about removing roadblocks to faith. We have been seeing from the scriptures how God has given us dominion and how we can walk in dominion and be the head and not the tail. For his desire for you and me is that we be above the situation and not beneath to be the influence and not to be influenced by things that are happening around us. Let's go to Mark chapter 11, read verse 24 to 26. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Now, this passage, in fact, starting from verse 22, uh, Jesus talks about uh, having faith and through faith having answers in life. Now, uh, if you have a, a New King James Version, I do use one. You see the words of Jesus in red letters starting from verse 22 all the way to verse 26. So Jesus is speaking on faith and this is uh, one, um, you know, paragraph or one discourse of Jesus on faith. And we've been talking about uh, faith and how through faith you can literally uh, speak to your mountain, which is your situation, the issues that you're, that you're facing in life, and how you can see victory by faith and prayer and how faith is born at heart and faith is born through the word and um, the process of faith all these teachings are uh, we have come through in the past episodes and just in case if you missed it you can go to our channel on youtube english space fcc that is fountain of compassion church and uh, you can have all these teachings right there and it'll really help you to have a continuity and you'll be able to understand deeper on what we have been uh, studying on faith. In fact, in verse 22, Jesus says, So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. So Jesus talks about faith. And again, verse 23, he talks about how you can Speak to the mountain and not doubt, but believe. So again, the word believe, it, it means faith. Verse 24, which we just read, is asking to God, asking God in prayer with faith and not uh, having any doubt, and you will receive. So again, the word believe comes the third time. It's, it's faith. 
So Jesus has been speaking the importance of faith. And if we can, by faith, face our situations. By faith, speak to our problems to go. Sickness to be healed. Poverty to be removed. Curses to be broken. So you, you, you have faith in the word of God and in the name of Jesus and speak. You see breakthroughs. And having said that, Jesus is talking about uh, something else in the same breath, in the same tone. Uh, verse 25 and 26, he speaks about the role of forgiveness in actually uh, activating your faith. Now, what does that mean? There's something that's connected. Faith and forgiveness are connected. But in a deeper sense, I could also say that Jesus was meaning the faith that can work in your life is the faith that works through love. Now that's a very important statement. The faith that can really work is the faith that can work through love. Because sometimes when we, we think about faith, we just mean that it's just putting your foot down and saying, God is healing me. God is prospering me. God is delivering me. Well, that's true. But then faith is so connected with hope. And as much as it is, it, it is connected with hope, it is connected with love. Galatians chapter 5, verse 5 and 6. For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Now look at that. The hope of righteousness by faith. So faith and hope are connected. Verse 6. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything. But faith working through love. That's amazing. Faith. Now listen. Faith works through love. In other words, if there is no love, then faith does not work. Ain't that amazing? That's, that's an eye-opener for someone. Now, if faith is the engine of the vehicle, because engine is like the heart, and love is the fuel that runs the engine. Now, without love, faith does not work. Now, so, so, so important. Now, that is why when Jesus operated faith, in every instance, he spoke words of faith in healing people, delivering them, even multiplying food, and so on and so forth. But everything was motivated by one factor, and that one factor is always, was always love. Now, as much Jesus operated in faith, that faith was moved by love. Because we see everywhere in the Bible, when Jesus worked miracles, the Bible says he was moved with compassion and then he did miracles. He was moved with compassion for the multitudes, for those who were scattered like a sheep, for those who were sick, even in the grave of Lazarus. Jesus was moved in with compassion that he wept. And then he operated uh, faith and that was a miracle. So may we always remember that love is the fuel that ignites or sparks faith. Without that spark, there is no blaze, right? So without love, faith is not working at all. Uh, that's why, again, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Paul, a great man who just did great things for God by faith, actually emphasizes, puts a great emphasis on love. First Corinthians 
chapter 13. He says, verse 1 and 2, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but not, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. Now, you see, Paul is saying, I have faith enough to move mountains, but the mountain is not going to move unless I have love. Love is so, you know, it cannot be replaced. It is indispensable. So here we see Jesus is telling his disciples, he's telling us, that when we ask in prayer, we need to ask in faith. But then when he addresses the issue of forgiveness, that's basically is addressing the issue of love. So he was telling his disciples, you need to operate in love. When somebody is operating in love, he is operating in forgiveness. Many times... We are, you know, hurt and we are offended, maybe through someone's words, maybe through the way someone treated, maybe even the way you were brought up, you were abused uh, in your childhood, or you have been brought up in a very harsh way, or you have faced so much of abuse in your situation. And now you have a need and you want God to intervene in your situation but there is so much of hurt there's so much of pain there's so much of uh, uh, you know agony in your heart there are wounds in your heart now how does that really uh, fit into the equation you're believing God you're saying God uh, I'm believing for my healing. I'm speaking to my sickness to go. I'm commanding my poverty to go. I'm, I'm speaking to this mountain of uh, issues, the challenges that are right there in my marriage or workplace or, or in my business. I want these things to go. But then you feel that things are not changing. Things are not moving. Now, that's where... The, the element of love actually fits into the equation. Is there still pain in your heart that you've, you've not forgiven somebody? When you think about someone, you know, you're really worked up because of what that someone has done against you. The words that they have spoken, the way that they have treated you. Maybe you've been like you used and thrown away by somebody and that hurt is so fresh in your heart every time you get to pray you know you're not able to pray because you need to first deal with this thing that is in your mind in your um in the in in the frame of your mind how much hurt you feel because of the abuse verbal abuse or physical abuse or whatever kind of a thing that has happened. Maybe you have actually come out of that situation, that person has left, or you have left that situation, but still, that memory is so real, so fresh in your mind. Now, in that case, what happens is, though we get to believe God for a breakthrough, the faith does not work, because there is that uh, I, I could call it unforgiveness. Uh, I could call it a kind of pain. Now, pain and unforgiveness are two different things. There can be still pain, even after you've forgiven somebody. But forgiveness is so important to release at that place, you know. You need to forgive that person. You might say, but pastor, what I've been through is so hard, is so terrible. 
But I want to tell you, you forgive somebody not as an act of emotion. You can still feel bad, still feel the pain. But forgiveness or releasing forgiveness to someone is an act of of the will. It is a decision of the mind and it, it, you know, it's not about your emotion. Because the Word of God says we need to forgive that we can be forgiven. Anybody who has not forgiven someone through whom they have hurt is actually a um, slave to that person because all the time what that person has done, what that person has said, how that person has treated is running through the mind. And that's literally keeping this person in a prison, in a frame of slavery, because you're not able to get out of that thing. But the good news is God has given us the power to forgive someone. Now, when you forgive someone, it's not, it doesn't mean that God is forgiving that person or that person is acquitted. But you are releasing yourself from that horrible thing that person has done. So you are actually freeing yourself from the impact of that word that has been spoken over you. That act that has been done to you or that thing that had been inflicted upon you, you are released. You might say, Pastor, is that real? That is real. And that's why Jesus puts the importance of forgiveness in the equation to believe God for mountains to move. God is able to make your mountains to move as you speak to your mountains, but that requires you to release yourself from that bitterness, from that resentment that you have, from that unforgiveness that you have. Maybe it might be uh, somebody in your friends who have done that evil to you, or maybe even in your own family, your father, your mother, or your relatives, your siblings, your uncle, your aunt, whoever it is who has actually hurt you by words, actions, desiring evil, even going all the way to fabricate things against you. But I want to say that as you release forgiveness, as Jesus taught us in the prayer, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. What happens is you are released from that evil. And the good news is, Isaiah 54, in the last verse, no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. So deliverance from unforgiveness, bitterness, and resentment is gotten by forgiving that person and saying, Lord, I decide, I choose to forgive so and so, and I release them in the name of Jesus. Now that is something that we need to do. And that's a decision, that's an act of will that position yourself, that positions you in a place of faith working by love. Now, it might seem a bit hard because I know it's not easy. It doesn't feel easy to actually make this decision. But the thing is, we do it because that is the only way that you can see your mountain move, that you can have your breakthroughs, that you can have your prayers answer. Now, I would do anything that God wants me to do when he says that's the way for your prayers to be answered. I believe the same thing is with you. Your present crisis to change, God is ready to do that. And all you need to do is to put your faith into action by walking in 
love. Now we see the life of Joseph. Joseph was a young man who was loved by his father so much and he always liked to go the straight way, the narrow path. But then his brothers actually envied him and not only that, they hated him. The scripture says that they threw him into a pit after stripping him off his dress and then sold him as a slave. Now that's horrible to be treated by your own siblings that way. And it was God's favor, though he was sold in Egypt, God favored him to become a great man that he ended up being the prime minister next to the Pharaoh in Egypt and his brothers come. And when Joseph reveals himself to his brothers, recorded in Genesis 45, you know, he was really moved in his heart. But then he says in verse 4 and 5, And Joseph said to his brothers, Please come near to me. So they came near. Then he said, I'm Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. So the brothers of Joseph would have been shocked. But look at what Joseph says. Don't be angry with yourselves or don't be grieved. Now grief and anger are two different reactions because they could actually be angry with themselves because they did the wrong thing. They could also grieve so much because they actually put Joseph into so much of trouble. But he says, God sent me before you to preserve life. He even reiterates that because he says in verse 8, So now it was not you who sent me here, but God. Was seven again, and God sent me before you again. Repeatedly, Joseph had this thing in his heart that it was not his brothers. Yeah, they did all the evil to him. But God was working behind and beyond that evil to send him to Egypt. Now, this was not a belief that he had only now. This was there in his heart, I believe even when he was sent to Egypt as a slave. How could he have that heart? Because obviously, when he was treated badly, when he was mistreated, when he was abused, when he was actually stripped and, you know, treated with all painful things, maybe beaten up, and uh, all those hard things Joseph chose. I want to underline that word, he chose by an act of will to forgive his brothers. Now, when the brothers actually came first to Joseph, and Joseph was not recognized by them, but they were recognized by Joseph. I want to prove you a point that Joseph had forgiven his brothers long ago even when they actually did evil to him. I want to prove that from Genesis chapter 42, verse 8 and 9. So Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him. Then Joseph remembered the dreams which he had dreamed about them. Look at that. Now here are the brothers who have actually treated him so wickedly, so badly, so awfully, and, and sold him. Now, if he had remembered the pain that they had inflicted on him, how much they did evil to him, when he met them first, again, after almost, you know, 20 plus years, he should have first remembered how they had treated him, what they had done to him. But the Bible says that Joseph remembered the dreams which God had given when he was much younger, even before his brothers would do anything against him. So the vision, the promise of God was so fresh in his mind and not what the brothers had done because 
Joseph had forgiven them. That was the gateway for glory. And finally, when Jacob, the father, died, the brothers were again afraid. But Joseph had treated them well. But this is what he says, Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. But as for you, that is his brothers, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. In order to bring it about, as it is this day, to save many people alive. Now that is powerful. That really shows that because Joseph had forgiven his brothers, he could see God's hand working and turning the evil into good. Evil is always evil. Good is always good. But God is supernaturally able. He is almighty to turn the evil into good. Make the mountain to move when we operate in love. Forgive and release that person who has hurt you. I want to pray with you right now for your breakthrough. And I want you to choose forgiveness today. You know, and release that person. And you will see your mountain moving when you speak with faith. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for everyone who has heard this word. And I pray for that one person who has received this word and who's been struggling with unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment for, uh, because of what has happened to them, how people have treated, spoken against, abused them. But today, as they release forgiveness and release that person, give them that special grace to, to be strong in releasing. And, and, and stand and establish themselves in that uh, forgiveness every single day. Maybe they get the thought again the next day, but again they will forgive and release and walk in love. And I speak to every mountain of sickness to move in Jesus' name. Every mountain of poverty to move in Jesus' name. Every mountain of impossibility to move in Jesus' name. And Father, we ask you for healing. We ask you for blessing. We ask you for breakthroughs. And let it happen in the life of your children. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Let us know how you've been blessed. My email is pastorpaul.prayer at gmail.com. Looking forward to hear from you. God bless you.